Hello, I'm Surfer Clock. And I'm Tap G. And welcome to What's the Attraction? Where our work is your vacation. vacation. Remember the 1980s? A time of unparalleled optimism. Cheesy television shows. And no fewer than three toy-based cartoons on at any given time. Well, if Hot Topic and recent trends are any indication, <laughs> I don't think we've ever fully let the 80s go. True, but how can you not love the 1980s? Not having lived through most of it, maybe? Wait, wait hold on. I'm older than you? Mentally, no. Chronologically, yes. Oh, got me there. But yeah, a lot of really popular franchises having origins in the 80s are still going strong today. The ride we're going to focus on today got its start as a toy line, but went on to become so much more. In 1984, the American toy maker Hasbro and Japanese toy maker Tomy entered into an agreement to distribute and market a series of toys called, interestingly enough, Diet Clone and Micro Man, two different toy lines. They consist of vehicles that can become humanoid-looking robots by transforming. With the toys, kids had to do it by hand, manipulating parts to reveal the humanoid figure inside. The toys were rebranded into The Transformers and given a storyline adaptable into comic books, cartoon shows, and video games alike. Most commonly, the characters were in two distinct factions, the Autobots, the good guy robots, and the Decepticons, the bad guy robots, locked in an interplanetary struggle against one another. Once it became popular, there was no shortage of variations and differing timelines and such. You know, I always kind of liked Beast Wars. Just different enough to be intriguing. Generation 1 for life! Woo! Peter Cullen rules! The sparkly vampire from Twilight? No! He voices Eeyore the donkey. And even still does the voice for Optimus Prime, the leader of the Autobots. Oh, I guess that explains the Team Cullen shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh. Anywho, among the myriad of Transformers things brought along over the years, most recently, and most successfully, the series and its characters have been reimagined by director Michael Bay into a series of live-action films. As of this episode, there are three films with a fourth one on the way. Say what you will about these films. They're pretty polarizing. Their fiscal success, a combined total of over $1 billion domestically, shows that clearly these guys aren't going anywhere. Immediately following the success of the first film, development of a Transformers ride began. It would take almost three years and a hundred million dollars to make it a reality. Universal Studios Singapore got theirs first in late 2011. Hollywood was next in 2012, and finally Universal Orlando's opened up in 2013. I guess it just got easier each time they built it. Now that Orlando has its own version, we can delve in and experience Transformers The Ride 3D. Based on the world and universe created by the Michael Bay films, this attraction is the third incarnation of this particular building, once home to the Murder, She Wrote Mystery Theater show and the Herc and Xena Wizards of the Screen show. This building sat dormant for over a decade before its repurposing. It stands taller than everything else in Production Central now. In the films, humans and Autobots coexist on Earth, though their presence is kept secret by a government organization known as NEST, or the Non-Biological Extraterrestrial Species Treaty. The building is themed to a NEST base, though for some reason they let Optimus Prime, leader of the Autobots, stand as a sentry on the roof near the ride's entrance. You know, I never did quite understand that, but it does look pretty awesome. Once inside, you learn a few things about the base. It houses a Shard of the Allspark, an object in the Michael Bay Transformers universe that can bring mechanical objects to life. You walk by it early in the queue and learn more about its importance through further briefings. You may end up walking right past them if there's no line, though. The story, in essence, is that you're attending a training exercise by Nest. It doesn't stay that way for long, though, as the Decepticon bad guys are apparently destroying the city of... Nameless, in search of the Allspark Shard. Things reach critical mass just before you grab your 3D glasses, and it's revealed that you will be making your escape from Nest using the vehicle mode for the Autobot named Evac, and you'll be taking and protecting the Allspark Shard. The attraction seats up to 12, three rows of four. Once seated and you're given the all clear, you take a trip toward the Allspark Shard, which is stolen by Ravage, a Decepticon. From there, it's a mission to reacquire the Shard, and while I don't want to spoil too much, let's just say it's a pretty wild ride with appearances from some pretty big names in the Transformers universe. Action-packed from start to finish. If you are at all familiar with the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man ride at Islands of Adventure, you should feel right at home here. 
The two are quite similar, but I'd say Transformers feels maybe a touch more intense. Let's read and discuss! Alright. Well, even though the story is kind of kept to a minimum as you're riding the attraction... Oh, yeah. The story is very clearly established in the queue. Is it? It is. It's, you know, you're... They kind of try to make it clear that the Autobots are the good guys and the Decepticons are the bad guys. I think they do as best a job as they possibly can trying to get people who aren't initiated into the universe, at least a step in the right direction. Now, you, you're not going to understand all the intricacies of this universe by the time you step off. Certainly not, especially with the way you kind of action-pack, wham, bang, whiz, wow your way through the story. And honestly, the story gets pushed to the back burner. This is, uh, this is about as Michael Bay a thing as you could possibly get. That's Explosions! Sure. Robots! Fighting! Action! Oh, and there's characters and story as it. An action! You know, the characters themselves, they're not... I mean, you are given a little bit of insight into them, but they're not really allowed to... None of the characters is really allowed to show through. It's assumed that you know these characters and you know their story, and it's awesome to be alongside them. Which is, unfortunately, not a very good way to do an attraction. Now, granted, you don't have a whole lot of time to set up who the characters are, what universe you're in, what are the stakes, and what's going on. And I didn't get that feeling when I first came to this ride. I walked through the queue and there was no line at the time, so I missed most of the stuff. I figured it was just elaborate decorations for the for the attraction in the queue. And when I got up to the front and suddenly were flung into this world of robots beating each other and were thrown in the middle of it, I'm like, I don't even know what's going on! I was never a fan of Transformers. I never watched the cartoon. But I know enough that I know, okay, Optimus Prime's the good one, and... Megatron. Yeah, that dude. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a problem if you don't really have a basic understanding, because you're seeing all these different robots, and you're flying around, you're going all around, but if you don't know who's good and who's bad, it's really hard to say whether or not you got to a good ending. All I remember is just flying metal. Flying robots, shards of glass, just constantly flying around. That's really the most number one thing I remember. I was confused for most of the thing. I will admit that kind of putting the story to the back burner and really just throwing you into a bunch of visceral experiences, while that can be fun for adrenaline junkies and anybody who likes a roller coaster, for something that's based on a beloved franchise, that's not really the... It may not be the best treatment for that particular franchise. For example, one of the questions I want to know is... Why are these guests in so much peril? I mean, I think you said something about like, uh, oh, they have to, they have to keep the all spark safe, and this guy stole it, so now you have to go get it, and now you're thrown in the middle of battle. It's like, wow, that just does not seem very safe at all. Well, don't forget that this really only started as a nest training exercise. You really weren't supposed to get involved in everything. Kind of like Men in Black. Yeah, you're kind of just, you're there. And, well, actually, you're there thinking it's a different attraction, but then you suddenly get thrown in the middle of everything. Yeah. This is really a trend for these theme parks. Yeah, something goes wrong. Something huh? goes wrong. I like the theming. It, it does though, It does it substantially. It does what it needs to do and all that. Um, but I think the only other thing is, is this really isn't that much different from Spider-Man over at Islands of Adventure, is it? Yeah... Um, a lot of people say that beat for beat, it is the same story. You know, yeah. you get something flaming thrown at you, there's a little bit of water. You fly you, through the air. You fall from a long distance. You get attacked by the bad guys, the good guy comes and saves you at the last second. Yeah, it is beat for beat, just maybe about the same story. But for me, I feel like Transformers has a little bit faster movement, and you're really taken through scene to scene. And even though you're really not moving that fast in the vehicle, the appearance that you're going fast is really quite an amazing experience. Yeah. This is a really good visceral experience. This is one for the adrenaline junkies. Those who don't necessarily need a deep story to get into the action of a ride. Someone like you. But you enjoy it anyway. I still enjoy it. I, I enjoy it because it is so intense and in that, you know, I can take a little bit of a back seat. I can excuse this one a little bit. I'm starting to do that a lot more than I used to. <laughs> all in all, I have to give this ride a 2.5 out of 5. I... I get really confused by it. I don't understand a whole lot of it. And I, and I don't like the fact that it's insinuating the fact that I, if I don't know what's going on, then I'm not going to understand this. Honestly, I don't feel like the ride really penalizes you all that much for not knowing what you're doing. 
but I mean that's that's the great thing about these visceral experiences. Now I had one more minor complaint is that I remember hearing that the one in Hollywood has a bit more interactive of a queue. Like, uh-huh. you push buttons and things actually happen. Sounds are actually made. Sure. Now, in this queue here, you have all the same knobs and buttons and things, but nothing happens when you manipulate them. You would think that... Kind of like Mission Space. Yeah. You would think that for an, an attraction built in Florida, a vacation destination, you would think that there would be a little bit more interactivity. It feels like they just threw in the buttons and said, ah, uh, we'll fix that up later. And they never did. And, yeah, just just a minor complaint. Overall, I really enjoy this ride. Though I don't in, I don't always enjoy its story being taken a backseat to the action. This one, you can definitely make an exception. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one a 3.5 out of 5. So, that's a 2.5 out of 5 from Tap G and a 3.5 out of 5 from Surfer Clock. Transformers The Ride 3D has a minimum height requirement of 40 inches or 102 centimeters. If anyone in your party is less than 40 inches tall, Child Slash Rider Swap is offered inside. Those who are 40 inches tall but still less than 48 inches tall must ride in the same row as a supervising companion, someone who is at least 48 inches tall and meets all other ride requirements. Universal asks that those who wish to ride be free from abnormal blood pressure, heart conditions, and back or neck problems. Expectant mothers, people who suffer from motion sickness, and those who can't handle strobe effects and fog effects, those who have a fear of enclosed spaces, and those who have had recent surgeries or suffer from unseen conditions are not recommended to ride this attraction. Service animals are permitted to ride, but do be aware that this is a slow-moving ride with minimal to adequate legroom. It goes in multiple directions with abrupt directional changes. It also contains loud explosion noises, simulated military combat effects, and overhead water effects. Guests traveling in wheelchairs or scooters must be able to transfer from their mobility device to ride either independently or with the help of another member of their party. Closed captioning and assistive listening devices are both available. Finally, as with any ride at Universal Orlando, you must be able to grasp the lap bar with at least one upper extremity, maintain yourself in an upright position, absorb forces similar to those of a roller coaster, and at least one leg must extend past the edge of the seat or terminate below the knee. Ah, ride restrictions. Like a tennis volley of safety instructions. We'd recommend this ride to Transformers fans both past and present, as even folks who didn't enjoy Michael Bay's reimagining will find something to enjoy here. Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime sounds as good now as he ever did, but uh, let's hope the reimagined Ninja Turtles don't get their own ride. Huh? Why not? Shrek already has a ride here. Hello! Kids younger than seven and folks who don't like motion simulators or 3D may want to skip this one. Still, it's definitely worth your time at least once, even if you feel you've seen it all with these motion simulators. Well, uh, I guess that about wraps it up. So until next time, I... Uh, what? What was that? Speaking of wraps, the Tex-Mex is here! I didn't know we had any Tex-Mex delivery places around here. I managed to get Bumblebee Man's taco truck to make a delivery out here. You know, Universal Ride Today and all that. Fair enough. But, uh, do they normally make deliveries in a Camaro? Camaro? That's definitely not our Tex-Mex. Bumblebee, the Autobot? Wow, I did not see that coming. Oh, right! He did bring our Tex-Mex! Awesome! A total violation of Nest Protocol, probably, but awesome. Optimus Prime atop Nest is totally okay, though. Fair enough. Until next time, I'm Surfer Clock. And I'm totally getting my knock on. Booyah! And thanks for listening to What's the Attraction? Raw work is your vacation. vacation.